Imagine a country that managed to transform an arid desert into vast agricultural lands by irrigating plants with salt water. How did this nation, located in one of the driest places on earth, obtain an almost unlimited water supply? Israel has territory occupied by two major deserts, the Negev and Judea. However, compared to 50 years ago, Israel is the only country on the planet with less desert area nowadays. Annually, the country exports over $2 billion worth of agricultural products, such as fruits and vegetables. But how did Israel turn its own desert into a true agricultural powerhouse and overcome water scarcity? That's what we're going to find out now. According to a report from the United States National Intelligence Council, over 20% of the world's population will face a water crisis in the coming decades. This crisis will affect the entire global food system and won't be limited to just the poorest countries. Even the most developed countries may lose a significant portion of their agriculture if this happens. However, in an extremely arid country with over 60% of its territory occupied by the desert, the consequences would be even more severe. Nevertheless, at the present time, water scarcity doesn't seem to be a major concern in Israel. Besides being prosperous, the country is a significant food exporter and has an abundant water supply, capable of even providing it to neighboring countries. But how did they manage to overcome this water problem, and what can we learn from them? To answer these questions, we first need to understand a bit of Israel's history. In the 1920s, the territory that now belongs to Israel was under British control. Anticipating future water scarcity, they stated that the continued immigration of Jews wouldn't be viable for long. From that moment on, Jewish organizations in the region realized that their future depended on increasing water resources. Although it seemed like an almost impossible plan, in 1939, Simka Blas, a highly esteemed Polish hydraulic engineer, was hired to develop a water acquisition plan. This plan played a crucial role in securing Israel's future. Blast devised a three-phase plan that was implemented over the course of decades and allowed for Israel's demographic and economic growth. The first phase involved extracting water through deep drilling in the desert's underground. Simka Blast believed that even in such arid areas as the Negev Desert, it would be possible to find groundwater. This initial step was successful but not sufficient. The country needed to utilize the entire available water reserve and direct that abundance to where it was needed. The second phase aimed to pump water from the Jordan River, the region's most important river, to the southern part of the country, reaching the Negev Desert, where new settlers could establish themselves and cultivate their fields. The final and most crucial phase was the construction of the National Aqueduct. This impressive project, spanning over 100 kilometers, was designed to transport freshwater from the northern part of the country, especially from the Sea of Galilee, the largest freshwater lake in Israel. It connected to the systems developed in the previous phases. This massive water system ensured access to fresh water throughout the country. Putting this plan into action was extremely urgent as the state of Israel had 806,000 inhabitants when it declared independence in 1948, and in the following three years, an additional 700,000 people arrived in the country. To meet the needs of so many people, feed them, and ensure their survival, a significant amount of water was required. Therefore, water restrictions became increasingly severe, and implementing the plan was of utmost urgency. However, there was a problem, a substantial amount of money was needed, and Israel was not a wealthy country at that time. Of the few resources available to the new Israeli government, many were allocated to military expenses to ensure national security and defense. It was in this context that then Prime Minister of Israel, David Ben-Gurion, made one of the most controversial decisions in Israel's history, which could even lead to civil conflict. The Israeli government signed an agreement that stipulated receiving compensation of 3 million German marks for the Nazi crimes committed against the Jewish people during the Third Reich. The Israelis felt that their pain was being compensated through one of the most tragic events in human history. 
Despite the dissatisfaction of many in the protests and demonstrations, the Israeli parliament approved the agreement by a difference of just two votes. After the agreement, money was no longer an issue, and the water implementation plan was initiated. In 1964, the national aqueduct became a reality, concluding the three phases of the initial project. Water supply was finally guaranteed throughout the country. Without this immense work, the significant economic and demographic growth that Israel experienced would not have been possible. Today, with over 9 million inhabitants, Israel has become a modern and prosperous economy. However, if it wanted to maintain this status, it needed more water. In the early 21st century, water supply issues once again became a challenge in the country, and a new plan was launched. In 2006, it was decided to transfer the management of the water system from politicians to an agency that would oversee it professionally. This agency implemented stricter measures and started charging the real cost price for water supply, eliminating government subsidies, as is the case in most countries. This measure not only promoted water conservation in the region but also increased the system's revenue, allowing for the construction of more infrastructure and improvements in its maintenance. The revenue generated facilitated significant improvements in the system, such as preventing leaks in the pipelines, which in many countries exceed 30%, while in Israel, it is below 10%. This measure was a complete success. Without the need to restrict supply, public and private water consumption decreased by almost 20% throughout the country. To further drive innovation and promote responsible water usage, the government decided to support technological investment in new companies. This is how Israel developed one of the great agricultural revolutions of recent decades, drip irrigation. This technique saves up to 60% of water and enhances crop performance, even in arid areas. Another area in which Israelis excel is seed production, both traditional and genetically modified. This has allowed them to reduce water consumption for each plant. Some seeds can be irrigated with brackish water, which is slightly salty and abundant in the country's underground, but has long been considered useless. In Israel, you can find melons, tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, and many other types of fruits and vegetables that are irrigated with a mixture of fresh water and salt water. In recent years, Israel has been investing in water recycling projects and has developed an infrastructure capable of distributing treated water throughout the country. Approximately 85% of all water used in the region is reused for agriculture and irrigation of parks and golf courses. Additionally, Israel has become a world leader in desalination technology. The country is home to one of the largest desalination plants in terms of volume and efficiency, capable of processing over 600 million liters of water per day, making it a virtually inexhaustible source of water for its population. In this way, Israel has managed to overcome the drought that has plagued the desert region for millennia. It has transformed from a dry and arid country into the largest water supply center in the Middle East. Now, what do you think of the system developed by Israel? Do you believe it could be applied in other countries and be the solution to the water crisis in many of them? Share your opinion in the comments. Thank you very much for watching so far. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe to the channel to further strengthen our community. If you have any specific topics you'd like to suggest for the channel, leave your suggestion in the comments. See you in the next video.